Hi, I'm Professor David Abbey, and this is Topics in Astronomy. In today's video, I'll be talking to you about constellations. Constellations are groups of stars that sit close to one another on the sky and that humans have joined together into a recognizable shape. One very bright and easily recognized constellation is the constellation Orion. It's visible from the northern hemisphere during the winter months of the year, and it takes seven fairly bright, easily recognizable stars, along with seven to ten fainter stars, and forms them into a recognizable shape. The shape commonly attributed to the constellation is given the sketch that you see on the right-hand side of the slide, attributed to the medieval scholar Hevelius. The actual shape that Orion takes on the sky is shown to the left of that drawing. Someone has helpfully put on some lines to connect the bright stars in the constellation Orion so you can see its overall shape. And if you have a hard time convincing yourself that the highly detailed hunter on the right-hand side of the slide could possibly come from that stick figure collection of stars on the left, well, who could blame you? These are chance projections of stars on the sky that we've identified because humans like patterns. When we put stars together in patterns like Orion, it allows us to tell stories. And the constellation Orion was attached by the ancient Greeks to a legendary hunter. And that hunter then forms a central element in a complex story that's woven into not only Orion, but many other constellations across the sky. This is useful, of course, for storytelling um, by a campfire at night, but it's also very useful because these structures that we can identify and the stories that we attach to them make these constellations memorable and help us to spot particular parts of the sky and to judge things like planting seasons. Because Orion is a wintertime constellation, when you start seeing Orion rise in the east around midnight, that will tell you that the planting and growing season is coming to an end, and it will soon be time for the harvest. So constellations did, for thousands of years, serve a very important purpose. But one thing that's important to remember is that these are near chance projections. If I take those seven bright stars that make up the constellation Orion and map them out, I find that the stars are not even remotely associated with one another. They are at widely varying distances from a few hundred to over a thousand light years from the Earth. And therefore, as the sun moves around amid the other stars, the shapes of these constellations will gradually change until, if we wait long enough, much longer than a human lifetime, the constellations will eventually become unrecognizable and we'll have to come up with new ones. The sky is currently divided into a total of 88 recognized constellations. Many of those are based on Greek and Roman mythology um, and were first identified by Greek and Roman scholars two to three thousand years ago, but not all of them. One particularly famous one is the constellation Leo, um, which is generally described as being a depiction of the Nemean lion killed by Heracles, or Hercules if you prefer the Latinized pronunciation. But different cultures have identified different constellations. So the ancient Mesopotamians, the Egyptians, the Chinese, the Mayans, all had their own system of constellations. Some bright constellations, like, say, Taurus or Orion, are found across many cultures because they're easy to find, but, of course, each culture has their own specific constellations, usually made up of considerably fainter stars. So here is the constellation Leo, as seen on the sky. Um, this is a rendering from a free planetarium software called Stellarium, um, which I periodically use to conduct demonstrations or to carry out labs. 
And if you just look at the stars without any of the guiding features, it might be really hard to tell yourself, oh, well, clearly this is a lion. But if you have some help, you can put everything together and say, oh, yeah, all right, I kind of see that. And that's really the best you can hope for constellations. Uh, Leo and Orion, which we saw previously, are some of the constellations that do a better job resembling what they're supposed to be. Some constellations are just really weird, and of course I haven't included them here. There is also an important subset of the constellations, which are the 13 constellations that belong to the zodiac. These are constellations that sit along the ecliptic. Uh, the ecliptic is the path that the sun takes through the background stars. I talk more about the ecliptic in my video on the celestial sphere. So if you haven't already seen that, I encourage you to go check it out. The constellations of the zodiac include familiar names like Leo, Libra, Sagittarius, Scorpius. All of these are constellations of the zodiac along with a bunch of others. And if those names sound familiar, they should because they're connected to your horoscope. So if you go and read your horoscope in the paper, which no one does anymore, or get it through an email list or something, the sign that's associated with your birth is one of these constellations of the zodiac. And that happens because the sun moves through these constellations over the course of a year. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't pause for a moment and say, horoscopes can be really fun if you like reading your horoscope. That's cool. Keep doing it. Have fun with it. But don't use it to plan your financial arrangements because... As it turns out, astrology is bunk. Um, so it's poor science, and it doesn't tell you any reliable information about your future. So have fun with it, but don't take it seriously and use it to plan your life. So far in this video, I've introduced to you the idea of constellations, which are accidental groupings of stars that are close to one another on the sky, forming into a recognizable shape. Usually we attach stories to these shapes to make them recognizable and allow us to navigate around the sky. This is kind of an abuse of the human tendency to find patterns in nature, but it is also a useful abuse. And there's a subgroup of those constellations called the constellations of the zodiac that sit along the ecliptic. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you soon for another topic in astronomy.